Welcome back in. Trey Lowell here with Lowell Productions. So we're getting close to wrapping up 2022 as a video production year. And it kind of makes me want to discuss some of the gear that I find most useful. So in today's video, we're gonna cover 20 items that I find that I pretty much use in every production. These will be items that I consider some of the best purchases I've made. Some will be expensive, some will be very cheap. We'll talk about them coming up next. So to kick things off, item number one, and we're gonna start with the one that I own the most of. Oh, I've got a ton. Are speed boosters and adapters for whether it be my GH5, my S5, or my GH4. You guys can see I have abundance of adapters. We have the Viltrox EF to L mount. Uh, this is gonna be their original adapter. Love it because it allows me to use all of my Canon glass. Basically in a nutshell, anything full frame EF mount will be able to then go to your Lumex S5 camera. We've got my Sigma OG adapter that I actually bought when I originally purchased my S5. So that's another adapter EF to L. And then we have Old Faithful. We have the Metabone Speed Booster adapters, which is like OG for GH5 micro four third shooters. This allowed me to put Canon lenses on that GH5, whether it was to save money or really to just kind of advance my camera to take a step up in regards to video production. These items have come in extremely handy. Now we move into item number two and it's going to be a cage. Now this one specifically is for my Lumex S5. I absolutely love it. It's from Tilta. I wanna say it was like $110 and I love cages. I actually have one on my GH5 as well, really because what I've found is over the years, I've gotten more items, whether it be microphones or hot shoe mount adapters or handles or just V mount batteries, you name it. Getting a cage will kind of set you up for in the future being able to beef up your camera. So if you're out there and you're wondering, cages do come in handy. I used to think they were kind of silly, but like I said, I started getting more items and goodies, beefing up the camera, making it bigger, and the cage is a must. So item number two being cage. Number three, this is a must have, and that's going to be an SSD hard drive. Honestly, you can get these for I think $100 for the 500 megabytes. I've got a one terabyte, I have two of these. Now, whether it be SanDisk, Toshiba, whatever, here's why I say I recommend an SSD drive. If you're gonna be someone that is going in and filming events or doing things on the road, there's just so much anxiety that comes with hard drives and I found that SSDs fail the least, they're super tiny. And to be honest with you, just get a few of these and save yourself the heart you know, I guess the issues of just totally freaking out if a hard drive fails. Item number four, which is the small rig. This is a little tool. Peter McKinnon has one that's similar to this, probably more expensive, but I recently purchased this and look, it just got all my little Allen wrenches, flat heads, Phillips, you name it. Comes in a nice little case and I find this to be really handy when it just comes to day-to-day -day, uh, YouTube videos or just anything with video, photography, you name it. So item number four, small rig little tool kit. Item number five, we're gonna stick with small rig and this is an item that, man, clamps and then this little ball head here, these are awesome. I could go on a long laundry list of things that you can do it. You can use it for GoPros, you can attach cameras, you can attach it to a bike, you can attach it to a light stand. So a clamp from small rig plus the little ball head, you can buy them separately or you can buy them as a package deal. And I wanna say that is item number one, two, three, four, number five. Item number six, oh man, a handle for the top of my camera. And you guys can see I have my little like monitor mount here on the end. It goes into the hot shoe or the cold shoe top of the camera. And I just find, boom, it comes in very handy. And uh, monitors, microphones, tons of wires, you name it. I've started to use this for pretty much all my productions. And item number seven, cheapies, but a must have. And these are some clamps, whether it be plastic or metal, get them off of Amazon. Uh, I use them to hang curtains. I have like sound blankets that are hanging all over the studio. And I find that these clamps, man, I don't know if you end up showing up on a video shoot and there's just big windows and you need to control it, at least if you need to put some sheets over or whatnot, you've got your clamps. It'll get you out of a pickle. So go get yourself some of these. All right. And item number eight, 
No, it's not my gimbal. Instead, it's actually this uh, mount from Small Rig, or no, from Manfrotto, quick release. I have a ton of these. I wanna say like five or six, and then I have, I wanna say four or five of the actual quick, quick release like plate setup. I have them on a lot of my different gimbals. I've even got one on my monopod, and of course they're attached to my bottom of my cameras. And whether it be for my V-mount setup, a little bit beefier, it really just allows me to quickly go from tripod to gimbal, back to tripod, but I found these to be old faithful. And yeah, so item number seven or eight, there you go. Manfrotto quick release plates. Nine, the Shinobi Atomos Ninja, not the V, but really what we're talking about here, most useful item I think I've purchased in a long time, especially when it comes to the look of my production, plus pulling focus is going to be a monitor for your camera. Now I've used Field World monitors, I've used the Atomos monitors, I've got an iCan monitor that I'm currently using. I think bottom line, this is going to help tenfold when it comes to filming, pulling focus and things of that nature. So, and another thing as we're talking about video production quality are going to be some variable NDs. Now I have them, I wanna say this guy will fit on my Nifty 50. Boom, right here. That's gonna be great because I can go outside during the day and still be able to shoot at low apertures like an F2, F2.8 because of this variable ND. I do also have another one. It's a 77 millimeter for my bigger lenses like my Canon 24 to 105. Um, I even have a step up ring so that this can be used for my 70 to 200 lens. But uh, these are a must have if you're gonna be filming outside, if you're doing vlog content. Look, you can get them as cheap as like $30. I didn't want to buy one, but I promise you as far as um, not having your highlights be blown out and just literally be able to lock in colors and making a little bit more authentic, these are going to help when filming outdoors. Item number 10, look, uh, brand wise, Movo VXR10 Pro is my go-to in regards to my onboard shotgun mic. I've had this thing now for like two years, absolutely love it. Uh, the Rode uh, shotgun mics are great. I even have a Sarmonic, I want to say. Uh, one as well over here. I think you should highly look into in 2022 and 2023 get yourself a shotgun mic um, Also pretty good for vlogging. All right item number 11. I think yeah Rechargeable batteries are an absolute must-have it saved a ton of money for vi for very big productions Of course, I'll go on Amazon and buy some batteries and I'll have those but I always have these as well These have always come in handy charge pretty quick. I've got a ton of the rechargeable batteries at this point. So Rechargeables, consider it for item number, I think 11, 10. Item 12, Movo, some more audio. Look, this is the WMX2 wireless lavalier system. I just recently did a video on them. I've really enjoyed it. That's the audio that I'm currently using. But the reason that I bring up this is more to have the discussion about you guys need to get a wireless lavalier system if you're gonna be doing video production because at some point you're gonna be doing an interview or you're going to need to get quality audio. And I find that lobs really crush it. I know shotgun mics are great, but a lot of times you have to get them so close that you can either kill your shot or you need some kind of stand. And a lavalier system, if you can hire it properly and you're able to even, you know, on board be able to listen to it a little bit just in case something comes about. They are a must when it comes to raising your video production. We stick to audio. You need an audio recorder for item number 13. I have the Zoom H6, four inputs. I love it. I like the little LCD screen that it has on here because I'm able to actually see the audio signal a little bit better than it used to be with my Zoom H4. And then yeah, we do all our gain adjustment up here and I found it to be really useful. Separate tracks we can be recording and uh, so an audio recorder item number 13. Now we're gonna get off the subject of audio for a second, moving into item number 14. And this is a cleaning kit. Movo sent this to me a while ago. Look, it doesn't matter what cleaning kit it is, but I think you need to buy yourself at least a little rocket, um, mainly because for your sensor, especially if you're rocking full frame, you're gonna wanna get dust out of there. This one comes with a magnifier and a light, so I can kind of really get in there. I can see where the dust marks are. Um, it comes with also some spray, which is nice, and then it comes with swabs, and that way I can really get the nitty gritty out of my camera lenses or even the sensor itself, and then it has a little brush. 
boom for here, felt pad, and then a little brush. Item number 15, this is, oh man, if you don't know, then you should know, gaffer's tape. I use gaffer's tape constantly. A lot of times I actually use it to tape my lavalier mic to my chest right here, just to get audio underneath the shirt. Love it. Gaffer's tape obviously can be used for several things, whether it be to tape a light to a wall, tape a, you know, a light um, diffuser that's maybe giving you some issues. Maybe you forgot your clamp, so instead you need to use the gaffer's tape to uh, tape your gel to your light. You name it, hide wires, gaffer tape is a must, and it should always be in your bag for your video production for item number 14 or 15. Hmm. I don't know, we're getting up there. Item number, let's say 15 here, and we're kind of combining two for this one. And these are dummy batteries, whether it be for my GH5, I also have this for my S5. And then this is a dummy battery for my Shinobi. So item number 15 or 16, we got dummy batteries. Uh, item number 17 is one of my favorite things I've ever purchased and it's this Manfrotto monopod. Now, this thing is a beast. Why? Because I can put my gimbal on it. I can put my camera on it. Incredibly steady shots. And then also goes insanely high so my camera can get up. And if I want to, I can hold it out and do some really fun stuff. And if you don't want to be holding your camera, you just pop it down, put your hand on there, nice and steady. So the Manfrotto Monofod is a beast, whether it be back in the day or even currently, these things are great. Item number 20 is my travel bag. Now, I bought this about two years ago. It's just a newer travel case. I can't even say case, just bag. Um, all my gear pretty much fits in here when I go on most of my travel. I'm able to fit two cameras, several lenses, my monitors, batteries, um, my V-mount, all the stuff to assemble that. We've got some more batteries here, XLR cables. So look, the reason why I really love this bag is that a combination of this bag plus my carry backpack is enough for me to get the vast majority of my gear outside of tripods. So it means in most cases, if I fly like Southwest, I have my two carry-ons, which is this, my backpack, and then I have two check-in bags for free. Now. Other thing that I've kind of noticed talking to other cinematographers is that if they, and look, I love Pelican cases. If I had the money, I would actually get one. But most people that I know that have them, they constantly run into issues where at the airport, they're getting checked where, knock on wood, with this bag, I've never had any issues. And let me be the first one to tell you, I had some items in here that kind of, I would even red flag if I worked at the airport. But I do think because of the material it's made out of, it's not a hard case. Instead of, it's like a traditional kind of bag um, where it's a little bit flimsier. So it's not as protective as Pelican. It's not waterproof or anything like that. But I do think that that's why I get a lot less hassle. And added bonus is of course it has wheels. We have a handle here. So at the airport, it's great. And then of course, this is nice. I only use it every once in a while, but it can turn into a backpack as well. So this bag, I wanna say like for like $130, I've really enjoyed it. Um, I find that it has plenty of storage. Like I mentioned, almost all my gear fits in here, plus my backpack. And that was a mouthful, but those are 20 items for 2022 and even 2023 that, whether it be the price or just the functionality, really what I wanted to show you here are these are items that I truly use for the vast majority of my productions. And uh, if they're not in your camera setup, Maybe take a look at it, see if it'd fit your workflow. But hey guys, it's Trey Lowell with Lowell Productions. And as always, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like the content we keep creating here on this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Somehow I totally butchered the numbers on that. I completely lost track. Shit, what was 20? I think 20 was just gonna be one of these little LED lights. And really, these things are awesome. This is a Falcon Eyes. This is a, is this an Aperture? Yeah. Uh, I forget the names of each of them. Falcon F7 Mini. Look, not really biased towards either. They're great, they're RGB. Um, they're both super tiny, got magnets on the back. That's number 20.